Good morning. Good morning. Please stand. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. As we begin Mass for the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, our song will be Sing a New Song.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good morning, Father. And I want to uh, put a little shout out too for those who are watching live stream. Thanks to Bill and uh, his crew that he has. But today we welcome those who are watching from home. And let's begin as always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Lord, have mercy. You are filled with compassion, and you forgive us our sins, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty more days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act not as having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully, for the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the Gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before we begin, I just want to take this opportunity to thank so many of you, all parishioners of this beautiful parish, those watching from home, for your uh, prayers recently and your concern uh, of having COVID-19. But thank God and our Blessed Mother, there were only mild symptoms. So I just want to thank all of you. And as I was telling a dear friend of mine, um, it just seemed like our Lord and Blessed Mother were shielding me. I really... Prayed every day so very hard, but thank God it was only mild symptoms. So again, you know how important prayers are, but I'm going to tell you something right now. Father Nash is the carrier. <laughs> Please, he's the carrier. <laughs> Stay away from him. <laughs> now listen, the other thing too I want to say is, you know, I love when somebody lives out the gospel message literally. I'm going to tell you where Father Nash is right now. He's up at Francis Slocum State Park, and he's ice fishing. He has a tent over himself, and again, he's doing what Peter, James, and John would always do in the time of Jesus. He's in the industry of fishing. Pray that that tent doesn't blow over because he'll be gone. <laughs> My dear people, 
The gospel today, I think, is so very poignant for all of us. Because first of all, it says to us, repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. And then further on, Jesus tells his disciples, you are fishers of men. You are fishers of men. I think those words must resonate with all of us, especially, especially, and every day as we continue our journey here on earth, that we have to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And again, to be fishers of men, meaning we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I want to share this story with you. At the age of 15 years old, Margaret Meeren was a member of the Nazi youth movement in Germany. After the war, she learned about the atrocities in the Nazi concentration camps, and she was shocked. Suddenly, after all this, she realized that Hitler was not the glorious leader that she thought he was, and that they were brainwashed in thinking this. She vowed never again to believe in an adult. It was in this frame of mind that Margaret also began to have her doubts about her own atheism. One day, she even prayed to God saying, God, if you do exist, please give me a sign. About this time, she began to come across a Bible. She tried to read it several times, but it didn't make sense to her. Then one night she picked it up again. This time it made sense. Margaret read today's gospel. She wrote later that something happened to me, she said, when I read the words of Jesus, she said, I knew he was alive. I knew he was there, even though I could not hear yet or see him at that moment. But Jesus was real, she says, more real than anything around me, including in my apartment, my furniture, she said, even my books, my plants. I was no longer alone. My life was no longer a dead-end street. A few years later, at the age of 21, believe it or not, Margaret became a Franciscan nun. And now she's assigned, or was assigned at that time, to do missionary work to teach minority students in South Africa. My dear people, Margaret Meeren's story dramatizes to all of us the fact that God is still calling men and women, just as God called Jonah in the Old Testament times and James and John in the New Testament times, especially in today's gospel. When we speak, of God's call to people, or to be God's prophets, and of Jesus' call to be people, to follow him, to be his disciples, we frequently speak of the word vocation, which in Latin means to call. I dear people, everyone in this church and at home, God is calling all of us and continues to call people. Yes, the ministerial priesthood, religious life, but also lay faithful. All of us are called in this world to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. We continue to serve the Lord as best as we can. God calls each and every one of us by name. Yes, he knows we are weak. He knows we fall away sometimes from his love. He knows we are fragile people, broken. But as St. Paul tells us, God calls the weak and makes them strong. My dear people, I am sure all of us, at any given time throughout our lives, that sometimes we are called to do things to go beyond ourselves. And sometimes we'll say, I can't do that. I'm not worthy. I'm not up to it. I, I can't do it. There's fear. But then if we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit, we can move mountains. We can be the best disciples that Jesus is calling us to do. One thing I have learned, and I'm sure all of you, when it comes to God, you never say the word never. <laughs> because again, he's going to call us and we will respond. 
You know, in the case of Jesus, things can be different. Jesus can put his spirit in us. He can share his own power with us. He can enter our mind and our heart and help us to do what we thought we could never do alone. To have Jesus enter into our life, we need only to open our mind and our heart to him, and he will take care of the rest. But this brings me to a very important point about this. You know, there's only one thing that Jesus cannot do for us. He can't open the door to our mind and our heart against our own will. He can do everything else, but he cannot do this. We hold that key to open our mind and our heart, and only we can admit him into our life. And that takes us right back to today's gospel. Today's gospel shows us how to open the door and let Jesus in. He also names the price that we must pay if we want to do this. Again, we must do what the apostles did. We must be, be willing to pay the price that they did. We must be willing to burn bridges behind us and follow wherever Jesus will lead us. Places again, like I said, that we never thought before. If we decide to do what the apostles did, we decide to take every kind of risk for Jesus and he will do for us what he did for them. Jesus will make us partners in his work and again, give us our lives new meaning beyond our wildest dreams. My dear people, I want you to think for a minute, maybe not here, but at home. Think of one thing in your life so far that again, you were afraid to do and you couldn't do it. But yet when you turned it over to Jesus, he took care of the rest. We have that key. We have that sacred key that will open our heart and our mind to let Jesus in. You know, I truly believe, and I'm sure in my own family and in yours, there are people who will not get that key and open their heart. They want to keep Jesus out of their lives for some reason. Maybe they're afraid. But you know what? He knows us. He made us. And as I used to tell the kids in school, Jesus doesn't make junk. He makes us whole. He makes us new, even though at times we might think we feel like junk. But again, my dear people, we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I want to close with this meditation. It's from Edward Farrell in his book, Surprised by the Spirit. Who is this man walking along the shore by the shimmering sea? Who is this man, bright, shining, and loving, who looks at us with searing eyes, eyes that search our very soul? Who is this man who sees our thoughts and reads our inmost heart with loving, knowing eyes that say to us, nothing less than all of you is what I want. Nothing less than all of you is what I want. And your people, that man is Jesus Christ. That man is the one who walks with us. That man is the Savior who died for us, that we might be free of sin and death. That man is the one who tells us every day, come and follow me. That is the man who, if we open our heart and mind, will enter into us and take over our lives. It's not about us. It's about this man, Jesus Christ. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious and loving Father, let us present our needs and concerns before you this day. The response to our petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians, compelled by the word of God, strive for reconciliation and unified joy in the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. That leaders of the world act with wise compassion, promoting a preference for the poor of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. That unborn children the terminally ill, and those condemned to death be clothed in the same seamless garment of the right to life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the poor and the needy feel God's loving hand in their lives through the love of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That members of this assembly hold one another in daily prayer and bring God's love to the sick and homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That life in all forms be respected in every way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayer request received by our parish's ministry of prayer be heard and answered according to God's holy will. And we pause now to remember our own personal intentions in the silence of our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, George Zelenak, and especially for this morning's Mass intention for Dolores Waters, that they rest in the peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we have presented our needs before you, hoping you will hear and answer them according to your holy will, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the gifts are prepared at the altar, our song will be, How Great Thou Art. Grant that they may profit us for salvation 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in that Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his own passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and lay faithful. Remember, Dolores, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we might merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, all God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give to you. Look not at our sin, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a distant sign of peace. And peace to every one of you in at home. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <coughs> Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our communion hymn is Gift of Finest Wheat. You satisfy the
those watching at home and if in church you know this beautiful spiritual communion, please pray it with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this, at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you give us new life, may we always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and please remain safe. You too, Father. Thank you. As we go forth to carry on the mission of the fruits of this Mass, our song will be, All My Days. today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for daily mass. In the meantime, take care. Uh, be safe. Um, check out uh, if you are in phase 1A to get the COVID vaccine and do all you can to um, help bring about the end of this pandemic even here on the local level. Everyone take care. Have a blessed day.